The Commons, a method of socio-economic renewal, presented by the School of Commoning, at the 2011 Isaac Burrow Day. We start with the words of somebody that I'm sure many of you are familiar with, Vice President of the World Bank and former Minister of Nigeria's Solid Minerals Development, Obiageli Ezek Vesely. You see, abundance of misery is such a paradox. It ought to be the case that these revenues can transform the lives of the citizens. But then the opposite happens. It is the challenge to move the benefits of natural resources out of the hold of a smaller club of people and instead diversify the opportunity that it offers to a larger number of people. That's what will reverse the curse and that's the most important issue of the day for minerals rich countries. Of course that message is not new to you. The real question we want to speak of today is how can commons management of natural resources help end the abundance of misery? First of all, we have to ask the question, what is the commons? The social and political space where things get done where people have a sense of belonging and have an element of control over their lives, providing sustenance, security and independence. Commons are organised around resources that are collectively owned or shared between or among populations. In fact, this is not a new thing. It's remarkable that Eleanor Ostrom, Nobel Prize winner for economics in 2009, developed her theory based on studying communalism and collective action in the developing world, including Nigeria. In the next video clip, Eleanor Ostrom, in defining the commons, distinguishes between the different category of commons. How do you define the commons? I don't use the term the commons for okay. a technical. Uh, the term commons to me means a wide diversity of non-private goods. Um, so I use the term common pool resources uh, uh, as a technical term to refer to resources where it is difficult to exclude people, not impossible, but difficult, and where whatever I take takes it away from everyone else. Now, public goods may also be commons in that broader sense. So um, uh, when we talk about the commons, then I'm thinking of both public goods and common pool resources. Public goods are like knowledge. Um, it's still difficult to exclude people, but if I use uh, your book uh, and the kinds of ideas that you have, that doesn't exclude others. So, so far we can see how the commons can be viewed as a socially and politically organised space and also as particular resources, be they common pool resources or public goods. So common pool resources and public goods are two forms of commons. In Nigeria, some common pool resources that spring to mind are of course the oil, natural gas, fisheries and forests. And some public goods in Nigeria that spring to mind are the roads, health, education, electricity, housing and telecommunications. It is important to recognise that while common pool resources are depletable, public goods are renewable and replenishable. The property regime of common pool resources. The property regime determines who owns the common pool resources. 
So common pool resources can have private, state or communal property regimes and even state communal hybrid property regimes. We're all familiar with the first two being state and private led property regimes but the other two are interesting alternative solutions to explore further. Commons like traditional institutions already existing in Nigeria I would like to highlight three distinct social organisations as forms of cooperations existing among the Yoruba tribe. The first one is Auro. Auro is a cooperative system devoted for bush clearing or farm cultivation, including harvesting, and it's strictly rotational among the group members. Number two is Owe. Owe is applied more often than not to house construction and occasionally to harvesting of crops. It is based on the law of reciprocity. And finally number three, Esusu, applies to a group of people who come together to start a round of periodic cash contributions that are then given to each member in turn until all members have had their turn. In the following quotes, we can glimpse into an example of the commons as a way of life, where working together around a commons brings about the communal production of public goods. Rather than to wait for the local government authorities that are closest to them, the communities in southwestern Nigeria revive their old traditions and through self-organising and self-governing capabilities, have planned and executed several public goods and services that directly touch the lives of their people, including roads, health, education and electricity. So we can see that the commons is already present in Nigeria. We have identified the major common pool resources and public goods in the country and particular socio-political organising that reflect commons-like ways of life. So the question is, what does the commons need to realise its promise to Nigeria? Well, there needs to be awareness building and sensitising for the people and the governments about the enabling and hindering factors of socio-economic renewal and how the commons can foster socio-economic renewal and support that. And capacity building on two levels. There needs to be capacity building at grassroots level and government level. Capacity building in the government. Some examples of competencies to strengthen to assess the full range of socio-economic benefits that strengthen the commons and what they could do for the communities of the Niger Delta. To develop the right relationship between the government and the commons. to recognise and support constructive collective actions at the local level as a key to stronger social cohesion and allocate resources for that. And finally, to acknowledge the commons for their work and promote the experience of the best ones nationwide. Capacity building at grassroots level. Some examples of competencies to strengthen. To create commons institutions capable to protect and manage the commonwealth at increasing scale. To form a commons action network and enable inter-commons coordination and learning. To discover 
and map opportunities for government commons collaboration, which will make the biggest difference for the communities of the Niger Delta. So we touched on property regimes earlier, where the communal property regime, or at least the hybrid common state property regime, are preferable. In this next clip, James Quilligan will identify the most fund fundamental step in setting up such a property regime. And the social charter is when a, a group of stakeholders get together and begin to say, well, we have this grievance, but it's not going, what our concerns aren't going anywhere because uh, we're not organized and we haven't really fully articulated what the problem is. And let's do that. Let's sit down and create something that declares that we have the right to manage our own commons. What are the, what's the history of the problem? What is, what are the, ba what's the basis of the claims that we're making? Um, what are our rights in the situation? Um, wh what is our grievance procedure? What, what is our grievance exactly as it uh, pertains to the management by the state and the management by the market, or in this case BP or other corporations, of the, of the resources that really are ours and that we have to live with and we, we manage to the extent that we can. They've been outsourced to the state and the government, but but they're essentially our resources. Can we reclaim them? To what extent is that possible? What re resources can we realistically reclaim? Many ch social charters have been written for forests and land trusts and, and other places, um, and, uh, 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 watersheds and um, fisheries. Uh, so you, you've, got a, you've got a precedent for this, and um, the activists in um, in the Gulf region, rather than keep petitioning the corporations, keep petitioning the gov local governments and the state to do something, um, then they can say, you know, we have to act independently. And their first act is not to sue anybody or to, to uh, take any kind of adverse position, but to just say, let's organize, and on that basis, let's do something independently. And that social charter can be a very powerful tool because ultimately it can become a legal document. So a social charter is an important first step in setting up a commons and a commons trust. A social charter is a declaration of intent to hold a commons in trust for its beneficiaries. And the creation of a social charter is an important step in setting up an effective commons trust to protect a community's common resources. The commons need an institution for the government to take it seriously as a partner in negotiations. And so establishing institutions that are not state managed are crucial to negotiate the protection and sustenance of their resources. The mutual interests of all stakeholders in a commons trust that emerges out of a social charter are directly represented. And like commons and social charters, the commons trust is already being used. Examples of the commons trust are the Vermont Trust, the Global Atmosphere Trust, the Pacific Forest Trust, the Rio Atlantic Forest Trust, the Old Growth Forest Project, to name just a few of many such trusts in operation. the benefits of a commons trust. Empowerments of local people. Enhanced democratic engagement. Strengthens social cohesion. Ecological rejuvenation. And a more equitable and just balance between state, commons and business.
We can see the three major stakeholders in the image here. A diagram taken from the video we are about to see on the EITI Transparency Initiative. We will see the role each stakeholder has to play in making sure that that triangle stays together. The EITI, the EITI process is actually quite simple. It's a standard that requires that companies disclose taxes and other payments to governments and for governments to disclose what they have received from companies. An independent administrator compares the figures and publishes them in an EITI report. This allows people to see what has been paid and if money appears to be missing. This process is overseen by representatives from government, companies and civil society in an EITI multi-stakeholder group. Their model is focused on preventing corruption, but it is also useful on collecting the data on the exact size of resources from oil extraction that the commons should benefit from in a more equitable way. Is civil society an equal partner today? Well, no it isn't, because it's not as well organised as companies and governments. That is why it needs capacity building through training, coaching and workshops to help community leaders and activists become more competent in protecting and managing common pool resources and public goods and creating and managing mutually advantageous partnering relationships with business and government. And capacity building also through building institutions. These institutions include, as discussed earlier, the Commons Trust, which emerges out of a social charter between members of a community. And the Commons Action Network. The Commons Action Network would be a peer network of facilitators that could be set up in the Niger Delta region, which empowers them through sharing experiences and best or better practice of actually what works on the ground for them. And finally, co-creating a commons learning centre that would act as a online and offline space where all members of the community can come and learn about the commons and commoning. A culture of open learning would be encouraged where everyone is encouraged to learn and develop capacities in working together to protect, manage and cultivate shared resources. Now in creating a commons, a process of perpetual capacity building becomes possible for both the environment and the community of life it supports to reach its highest potential and flourishing. Stronger communities and healthy places to live, work and play really become possible. We hope this presentation has given some ideas about community organising and the potential for that using a commons perspective and method. If you found some nuggets of inspiration and want to get in touch to learn more and collaborate further, please do not hesitate to email us on team at schoolofcommoning.com and find out more on our website at www.schoolofcommoning.com. We also have a Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash schoolofcommoning. And for some news and inspirational insights into the world of commoning and the commons, you can also follow us on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash commoning school. And finally, in closing, I'd like to say a big, big thank you. Uh, it has been a great privilege to create this presentation. 
for you and we hope that you will spread the word and share this presentation with everyone who you feel may be interested in this approach. The school are delighted to have been given the opportunity to speak at a very, very important weekend of remembrance in dedication to a great, great hero, Isaac Burrow.